Okay, this one's going to be a little bit different. Most of my fusion designs are for projects that I intend to 3D print and sometimes laser cut or CNC. However, today I'm going to use fusion to renovate my bathroom. So I just bought a new house, hence the new studio here. And I'm finding fusion to come in very handy for all sorts of things from planning my layout to various home improvement projects. Stay tuned for a plethora of videos on all that. For today's project, I'm having my bathroom renovated and simply need to communicate some dimensions to my contractor. Now you can go all out with this. Fusion does have the capability to create very professional engineering drawings and you can go that route, but this isn't going to be that. Uh, I'm going for something that's a little better than a coffee stained napkin sketch. Uh, a quick and dirty approach, but more on the quick, less on the dirty. If you're new to Fusion, you'll find this video very helpful in terms of some basic sketching and dimensioning tips. All right, let's jump right in. Okay, instead of jumping straight into Fusion, I thought I'd take a minute to show you sort of the overall process and workflow that I used. Now, what I did here is I, I jumped into Canva, which is an online graphics design software. They have a free version and a paid version, but it's canva.com if you want to try it out. And here what I did, I simply brought in pictures of all the different components I'm going to be using. So I've got my vanity here, my medicine cabinet, the lights, and the faucet. And I just kind of brought them in to, you know, get them organized in one place. And now that I see them here, I'm going to open up a new design. And here I'm just going to kind of lay them out the way I'm envisioning they're going to be positioned. So I'll bring in the vanity. Actually, I've got a couple different screenshots I took. This one's more of a direct um, shot here. I'm just going to kind of position it here. Um, towards the bottom and maybe bring this down a bit. I'm not going to actually use it comes with a faucet there I didn't even know it came with one and I ended up buying another one But this one is sort of the color scheme we're going with this sort of it's called champagne It's like a muted gold But here, okay, so I'm just gonna kind of, I'm not scaling these to their actual size I'm just sort of gonna make them proportionate here um, get them centered and then above that we're gonna have the mirror the mirror just needs to, I need to make sure, and it helps you sort of think these things through, like when you open the mirror door here, that it's not gonna hit this faucet here. Um, and then above that, I'm gonna have the lights here, and I'm gonna position that um, right there. Okay, so this is gonna be the sort of layout here, and I might just kinda adjust them maybe a little bit to to scale, but I'm not adding any dimensions or anything here. Just visualizing it, seeing how it all goes together. Okay, now that I have that idea, let's go into Fusion and I'll go ahead and, and bring these in. And I do have, so, you know, from like the Home Depot site or whatever site you use, you can actually get the dimensions. Um, usually they have them in the drawings. So here you see the vanity. I've got this 24 by 18.1 inches and I'll be referencing those to bring in. Um, here I've got the lights uh, with all the dimensions and then the faucet here, uh, main thing there, it's five inches high. Um, the cabinet, there wasn't any dimensions, but I know that it's 20 inches by 32 based on the description. All right, let's jump into Fusion now. And here, first thing I'm going to do is I normally design in uh, millimeters, but it makes more sense here to use inches since everything is going to be defined in inches. So let's do that first. I'm going to go here to my units and change it here from millimeters to inch here. Click OK. And I'll start with the sketch on the front plane and we'll start with a two point rectangle. I'll reference it right at the origin. And here I measured my ceiling height, which is 90 inches and the width. Uh, I'm not going to go the full width of the bathroom. I'm just going to do 50 inches here. And then I'm going to double click my scroll wheel to zoom out. All right, now I've got sort of this basic um, rectangular layout here that I can start positioning things. And the approach I'm going to take here is I'll start with a rectangle. So these are going to be just some basic shapes to represent like the vanity and uh, the me medicine cabinet and faucets. Normally I would start with a two point rectangle. Let's start with the vanity. Um, but if I make a two point rectangle, it's I, I know I'm going to want to center these. So if you know ahead of time, you want to center things. I find it more useful to start with the center rectangle. So instead of two point, I'll go down to center here and I'm just going to go ahead and 
start drawing that out. Uh, the dimensions for this is 24 inches by 18.1. So I'll just go ahead and set that there. And that's based off of these dimensions here. So I'm seeing 24 inches wide by 18.1 in height. All right, now I've got this all set. I'm just gonna kind of move it into place here. Just uh, eyeball it to center it. And uh, might as well center that. So to center it, I'll use some constraints here. And for this, I'll use the horizontal slash vertical constraint and I'll constrain that center point on that center rectangle. Hold shift and hover about the middle here. Let me move these dimensions out the way so you can see them a little bit better. Uh, grab the constraint, click on the center of the rectangle, and then if you hold shift near the center here, you'll see that little triangle. Click on that and that'll align it. I'm not going to um, position the heights yet. I'm just going to simply um, center these here. Uh, and if you kind of um, don't want, you know how I hover over this and it lights up blue. If you find that a bit annoying, just double click on to select that whole rectangle and then uh, make it into a construction line there. All right, next on top of that is going to be the faucet. And here we see that that's five inches in height. I'll again create a center rectangle. Another way to go about that is you can click R for rectangle and in here in your sketch palette, you can choose the center rectangle option. And then we'll just go ahead and make that. I'll simply make it five by five and I'll adjust these dimensions here and then let's go ahead and position it. So the way I wanna position this is I want the center of this line to be centered about the line here on the vanity. So I'll choose my midpoint constraint here and click on my faucet and then vanity and it's gonna align it right into place. You're gonna see me use constraints a lot in this tutorial and you'll see how it dramatically speeds up your workflow. Uh, if you wanna learn more about constraints, I do have a constraints cheat sheet that I've linked below that you can grab that lists each one of the constraints and a little summary of what they all do along with a little graphic. Okay, next let's go ahead and draw our medicine cabinet. Now the medicine cabinet has this, uh, it's sort of a rectangle with the arch on top. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, to draw that, I'm simply gonna grab my line tool and I'll start just kind of sketching it out. You wanna make sure you're seeing these constraints. So here I have that vertical constraint and then I'm gonna go across. I've got that perpendicular and then I'm gonna go up. Here I can reference this line here and go straight up. Get, again, you see that perpendicular constraint. And to transition from a, a line to an arc, I'm gonna go back to that last point I made, left click and hold, and that will create an arc and I'll simply attach it there. Um, I see that I have a tangent constraint here. I don't have one on this side, so I'm gonna go ahead and add that in by grabbing my tangent constraint, clicking on this line and the arch. All right, now I can add my dimensions here. Now I know that the bottom here is 20 inches, so I'll type that in. And the distance from here to the top of the arch is 32 inches. Now notice if I click the top of the arch, it wants to dimension it to that center here. Not what I want, so what we're gonna do is hit D for dimension. Uh, we'll reference that bottom, and then I'm gonna right click and choose pick arc circle tangent. And now you'll see I'll put a little X on the top of that arch, and I'll drag out to place that dimension. I'm gonna make that 32 inches, and there we have it. All right, so I'll double click to select this entire chain here, kind of move it up out of the way. And we wanna center this with the, our sort of wall here. Um, so what I'll do here is I'll choose, again, the horizontal slash vertical constraint, click on the center point here, and then I'll line that up to the center of our wall here in the bottom. Now that's centered. Okay, and then the last item we need is our lights. So I'll take a look at the dimensions there, 24.1 three by 9.92 in height. So for that, I'm just gonna represent that with a rectangle. I'll just draw that right here on the side, 9.92 by 24.13, hit enter. I forgot to make this a center rectangle, so sometimes what I do instead of um, deleting it and recreating it, I'll draw a line going diagonally. I'll take that line, make it a construction line, and then I'll add a point so I'll go to create point and I can reference and find when it snaps into that little triangle, that's the midpoint there. Now I can move it around by that center point. Okay, I'm just gonna move this into position right now. And I use again that horizontal slash vertical constraint to constrain that point to the center point here. 
on that wall to get it lined up. Okay, we have everything lined up centered on the wall, but we don't have our heights in, so let's go ahead and add those. Um, now, the height that I want from the floor to the top of the vanity here is going to be 34 and a half inches, so I'll hit D for dimension, reference the bottom, and then the top, let me drag it out here. I'm gonna make that 34.5. That'll move that up. Now the distance I want here from the top of the vanity to the medicine cabinet, the bottom of the medicine cabinet is 10 inches. So I'll go ahead and place that there. That'll move that up. Now with the lights, I want that to be in the middle here, centered between the top of the medicine cabinet and the ceiling. Um, let's see how what our distance is for that. So if I hit D for dimension, again, if I click the top and try to reference the top of the arch here, it's gonna wanna go to that center point of that arch, which I don't want. So let's do that trick again. Hit D for dimension, select the top, right click, choose arc tangent, and now choose the top of the arc here. And that tells me that that's 13.6. It's gonna be a driven dimension because that's already defined by another dimension here. Um, so let's see, uh, oh, you know what? I accidentally put 13.4, 34.4. I want 34.5 there. I'd really like to have 14 inches here so that way I can reference this seven inches from the ceiling and it'll be seven inches from the top of the arch. So here we're gonna move our vanity down actually I'm gonna go 34 inches and since everything is connected we see now that it moves everything down and I've got that 14 inches there all right to lock this into place there remember I only have it centered um, what I can do is hit D for dimension reference that center point from that top line there which is my ceiling I'm gonna click on it and I want that to reference this dimension here so I'm just gonna say take this and divide it by two and that puts it, it tells me that's a function of this dimension, which is going to be seven inches off the top. And this gives me all the dimensions I need to send to my contractor. Now I'd recommend cleaning these up a bit, just moving these dimensions so that they're easier to read. So you're not struggling to see what dimensions reference what. One tip here, notice these dimensions are in decimal form. So let's say for example, this dimension here, 34 inches, if it was 34 point one to five. You may not want to give it in that form. Um, you want it to be, let's say, 34 and one eighth. Uh, the way you can do that is if you go to your profile and go to your preferences. And if you go down here where it says units and value display, and right here where it says foot and inch display format, you can change that to uh, fractional or architectural. So let's go ahead and do fractional there. Apply, okay. And for some reason, I have to click back on the dimension for it to update. And now you see it says 34 and 1 8. Um, so you can click on all these and it'll update them. Um, I think if you just close the sketch and reopen it, it should also auto update. If not, this does it here. Um, so just in those cases, if you may not want to send these as decimal, you can, you know, send them in fractional form. And then finally, um, what I did honestly is uh, to clean it up. I just erased a bunch of dimensions that I didn't need just to make it easier to read because the only thing he really needs to know here is, for example, the dimension here to the top of the vanity, um, 34 and 1 eighth. Okay. And uh, this dimension here for the medicine cabinet you could either send it this way telling them it's 10 inches from the top of the sink or maybe you may just want to give that dimension from the referencing the bottom here so i may just want to put that in there as well here and tell them that that's 44 and 1 8 um, the other dimensions here they're not really critical here um, you know, deleting them, of course, makes it so that your design is not constrained. But, you know, what I'm trying to do here is make a very simplified drawing just to communicate um, some distances here. In here, I may delete a bunch of these and maybe dimension the center of that light from the top of the ceiling there, you know, and put that 6 and 15 16. You know, just make it so it's easier to read for him. And then basically all I did here is I took a screenshot of this, you know, on the Mac uh, is just command shift five. Just took the screenshot and then text it to him, you know, that way he can 
clearly see something that's not crowded with dimensions and it's in a form that's easy to read and if he has any questions you can just get it back to me that's basically it today i just wanted to go over this you know sometimes you just need to communicate something in this case it's just the relevant dimensions he's gonna need you can obviously you know create a design um, and then go into the drawing workspace and create professional drawings that's not what i needed here like i said before this is just something that's a little bit better than just sort of catching it on a napkin and sending it to him and i can instead send something that's a little bit better than that and um, effectively communicates what i'm trying to do another good reason for doing this is just things you don't think about um, when you're putting things together for example this height here and the clearance you need from the faucet you know if this was higher you can accidentally you know put something in where now you swing this door and it hits the faucet and you have to go back and pay to relocate or you know spend hours doing it yourself all right guys that's it for the tutorial today i just wanted to uh, show this quick little video on using fusion in different ways that you know in this case doesn't involve actually manufacturing something but also very valuable and practical and just getting a layout quickly done and uh, sent out to someone who's doing some work for you to effectively communicate what you're trying to do all right if you're looking to learn fusion check out my links below to some resources i have i'll see you in the next one